Hello, space fans. <laughs> uh, Tarek Malik, managing editor of, of Space.com, uh, here at NASA's uh, Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California, live uh, with uh, uh, Dr. Jim Green, NASA's chief scientist. And uh, uh, yeah, Dr. Green, thank you for having us here today. Oh, my pleasure. I mean, this is where the action's at. Yeah. If you want to know about Mars, in its interior, InSight is the mission that will do it. That's right. So we are here yeah. for the landing of NASA's Mars InSight, InSight Mars Lander. Yes. It's not landing today. It's landing tomorrow, tomorrow. at about 3 p.m. Eastern. That's 12.54 p.m. if you want to be exact. Uh, and here it'll be just, just after like lunchtime, I guess, like a lunchtime yeah, landing right. on Mars. Uh, Dr. Green, uh, what's what's behind us right here? Yeah, I mean, there, it is. there seems to be something wow. uh, just hidden oh, behind a, us. Yeah, just hidden behind us. Let me get out of your way. Yeah, there we go. So that's the InSight lander. That's, that's that a, a, a version uh, of it. It looks like Phoenix. If you remember when we landed Phoenix about 10 years ago, uh, that, that particular um, lander had the same basic structure. And it was designed to, you know, scoop and taste the dirt and look for the water, and it turns out found it. Uh, this was the, that was our first mission that gave us an indication that Mars really was, in its past, a big water world, much like Earth. But InSight is a different type of mission. You're yeah. looking inside now, the planet. Now we want to see how this planet has evolved after it was put together. So that means it's going to have a core. The core will probably be solid, iron, nickel, Okay, all the heavy material will sink to the core area. And then we hope to see also part of the core, an outer part of that, that is um, uh, molten. You know, this is where uh, it's so hot that maybe the iron is, uh, iron and nickel and, and uh, uh, other heavy elements are, are liquid. This is the area where a current would be generated, generating a magnetic field. And since we don't see that, we're not quite sure we're going to see much of a much of this liquid, liquid area. And then above that is the mantle. Now the mantle is a crushed rock where, where the pressures are so huge, new minerals are literally created. And then above that is the crust, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's the traditional crust, mantle, core concept of, of these terrestrial planets. And, and so InSight will, wants to see, so we know kind of what that looks like on Earth. Yeah. But we want to know what that's like on Mars. Right. Why do we want to know that for Mars? What can that well, help us, I guess, learn about Mars the Mars is smaller than the Earth, okay? And it may or may not have had plate tectonics. And so it, it certainly has evolved as a rocky planet differently than we have. And we see that because we don't see plate tectonics indications much on the surface. It may have started and then stopped. Earth is still doing it. You know, Earth is still modifying its, its crust because of the plate tectonic activity where, where one plate goes under another and new material comes up and boils up and, and fills all that stuff in. That's happening on Earth. It's not happening on Mars. It, you know, we have huge shield volcanoes, in fact, the reason why we don't think plate tectonics was much of a big deal there on Mars is uh, Olympus Mounds, the largest object, volcanic object in the solar system. I mean, this thing is 300 miles or more in diameter. I mean, you could take that and put it and cover the state of Missouri, okay, if you and brought it there. And it's taller than Everest, too. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. It's like, uh, I don't know, 25 miles or some crazy number like that. <laughs> you could look, you can know, Google that and see what it, what it really is. But the bottom line is, that's because magma came up and the plate didn't move. And so magma just kept coming up and, and when, then building it up and over it, time. It, instead of getting a Mars version of, say, the Hawaiian Islands where Correct. the plate is moving. Where right. the plate moves and then a new island appears and then a new island appears. That's because it's, you know, that magma is coming up. So that's why we think plate tectonics, you know, didn't get a really good start, except then there's the Tharsis Ridge, where there's three big volcanoes, one right after the other. Huh. And so something happened there. <laughs> we don't know if those are, are separate magma, or they're just the one magma area where, the, where, where it moves. So, I mean, uh, the idea then of, of uh, a smaller planet, how it evolved, Mars will tell us that. Great. Now, Mars is, say InSight won't be alone. On right. uh, on Mars, there's right. you've got Curiosity there. Yes. Opportunity, hopefully. Uh, you have <clears throat> hasn't a, called home yet. Oh, well, we've got time, right? Uh, not much time. <laughs> um, not much time. And and then there's the fleet of spacecraft oh, in, yeah. in, in orbit, uh, and then the two cubesats, the Marco probe that yeah. launched yeah. with 
uh, Insight back in May. Right. So, so it's kind of a, a really quick turnaround. You've got you've got your right. May launch. Uh, you go and wait through summer. You know when I guess most people are on vacation. Uh, you're you're hard at work here. The team We're is hard, hard at, work. at work. Yeah, they are. And now, uh, just after Thanksgiving, you've got this landing, and I'm wondering how you feel. I mean, you've seen well, this I'm, before. Well, I'm tremendously excited as always. Mars is always hard, but there you know there are certain events that will occur that will really pique my interest. Okay, so as soon as. The, the, um, you're about six minutes from the top of the atmosphere. The command is given to separate the, the carrier spacecraft with the capsule that contains InSight. When that's given, then InSight will go on battery. Okay? Everything will be run out of the battery. So it'll all be charged up and off it goes. So then it goes through its seven minutes of terror. It will land. Okay, it, we'll start. Let, let me. Yeah. Add, cause I've seen two different numbers about the number of minutes of terror. There's it's the actually six, six and a half minutes. So it's six and a half minutes. Yeah, so six and a half. If minutes. If you've seen on space.com, you see a lot of six minutes of terror, and then we heard today a lot of seven minutes. It's in between there. So uh, just just to give everyone. Yeah, 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 yeah. We we had a, a the seven minutes of terror with curiosity when you're up right. in the car on Mars. That's right. So it, it seems like there's like a similar kind of everything has to happen. So, so there's but you a, can't control it. Yeah. Well. Um, we can control some things, but I mean, uh, we're not gonna, we're not going to decide uh, to move it in any way that it's that it, you know it's on a trajectory to land. Yeah, so it's all it's set. It's going to go on the surface of Mars. You cannot <laughs> stop it. You know uh, that golf ball is going to end up on the hole. You know, and it's going to have perfect landing or be off a little bit or what? You know, we don't know we don't know a lot about that. It has this huge hand landing ellipse. Any if it lands anywhere in this 130 kilometer oblong by 30 kilometer ellipse would be delighted. Yeah. And we should point out that uh, Insight is going to, I almost said Curiosity there for a minute. Oh, a flashback. <laughs> uh, Insight is going to land on Elysium Planitia. Right. Um, That's the ancient ocean of Mars. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So the heavenly plane. Yeah, yeah. It's mm -hmm. a beautiful uh, uh, low bottom area of the ocean, ancient ocean of Mars. Wow. Okay. So we know Mars had a significant amount of water, and if you add the water, it would fill up where inside a city. Wow. Yeah. yeah, so now that's north of Curiosity, okay? It's north of Curiosity. Yeah, and, and it's, it's a very flat area, and that's on yeah, purpose to pick flat. it. You don't yeah, want a lot right. of rocks around. No, 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 you know. So. And, and it's meant to, you know, sit down and, and just sit and listen. So it's also one of those um, uh, spacecraft where it just takes time to accumulate the knowledge. Mm -hmm. And every, every time there's a quake, and a quake can happen uh, because Mars is still cooling off. All our planets are still cooling off. So it's readjusting on it, itself on the inside, producing Mars quakes as it does so. And then impacts occur. Uh, the atmosphere is thin, so something even, you know, several meters in size will make it to the surface. Okay. And we've seen images of those yeah, from the rovers themselves right. when they find so them. So even, even in the area where InSight's at, you see impact craters in various places, okay? And that's because they make it through the atmosphere and will hit, and that'll generate waves. And then there will be waves generated from a tidal interaction with Phobos. So as Phobos moves over, it just will yank on the crust a little bit. Phobos, one of the big moon of yeah, Mars. It's, uh, it's Deimos not, is the smaller one. Yeah, 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 true, but it's still only about 30 kilometers in size. It's not really huge. It's not a huge moon like we like, or I think our moon is. But that'll impact it. And then there's uh, then there'll be times when Jupiter will yank on it. Jupiter? Yeah. From the other side of the <laughs> asteroid belt. So, yeah. Wow. Well, Jupiter has got enormous gravity. You know, it's 300 times the mass of our own Earth. 300 times. The asteroid belt used to be an area where a planet was trying to get together, but Jupiter wouldn't let it. Yeah. Mars is a runt of terrestrial planets because Jupiter robbed it of material over time. Wow. Okay? Wow. And thank goodness that happened because if it was a super Earth or something really big, you know, Earth-sized, We'd be, we'd be really hard pressed to have humans you know, planning to go on, on the surface and then launching and coming back. Mm -hmm. That would be really hard to do. So, so to kind of detect those Mars quakes, InSight has a, size, a very sensitive, super sensitive seismometer. Yes, it does. Um, there's a weather station on the, on the surface, yes. of it, on the top of the, right. the, the lander. Uh, you have a heat probe that's going right. to hammer a, a mole, is that correct? It, into the... we call, uh, the original 
uh, uh, nickname for the instrument was the mole. Okay, but indeed it hammers into the ground 16 feet and allow us to get the temperature variation. Okay, uh, and, and that'll be very important because we want to know uh, how much heat is interior and how it's leaking out. And, and the kind of materials that are allowing that heat to, to move through them, okay? So there's a little, little knowledge about the material itself in addition to the heat interior of the planet. This will tell us uh, from, from, from using that data where below the surface we would expect aquifers to maintain liquid water because they have to have a certain amount of heat uh, and, and to melt the ice to maintain a liquid to stay. And that, to stay to stay a liquid and that'll be very important is it very deep or is it can it be closer to the surface we want to know that well that's only going to be the case depending upon how much heat is radiating from the planet now there's another instrument you haven't mentioned that i'm really excited about and what's, what's that that's the magnetometer oh okay okay now the magnetometer is sensitive enough that it's going to measure ionospheric currents huh. okay so when aurora occur on Mars... There's auroras on Mars? Yes, there's wow. auroras on Mars. And when they occur, they produce ionospheric currents that you can measure from the ground. Wow. wow. So it is, it is our first landed mission that will actually do space weather and connect with our orbiters that are measuring the solar wind and its interaction with the upper atmosphere of Mars. What? Wow. It's a great connection. So, so how long will Insight last on on the surface? Have we well, seen? Well, it's designed uh, to be um, a, a, about a, a Earth year, which is about two Mars years. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, one, one Mars year. Yeah, one Mars okay. year, which is two Earth years. So, okay. yeah, got that back. Sorry <laughs> about that. And, and that's important because that means then Mars will move around the whole solar system and experience all the gravitational tugs and pulls and with Jupiter and, 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 and uh, uh, all the variations uh, with, with our planets and we'll be able to you know, connect that to see all the gravitational influences that are occurring at Mars. Wow. So that's um, once again one Mars year or two Earth years. Great. So a lot to look forward to once it is once once Insight lands. But first, it has to land. Yeah. This isn't your first Mars landing, Mars it's mission not my at first, all. Yeah, I mean, that's you, true. You, that's you were, true. You, you were uh, chief of, of the planetary. Yeah, science I was head of planetary for 12 years. So, so I mean, is it is it the same every time? Is every mission different? Yeah, every Are there butterflies different. right now? Oh yeah, yeah. Every mission is different um, uh, because we're going to a different location. We're doing different things. We're adding to our knowledge. Um, this one, although the structure of the system is much like Phoenix, it's a, it's a little like what we're doing with Curiosity. We're building another rover that looks like Curiosity but has a completely different set of experiments. So what we're doing is leveraging success. We're not reinventing ourselves too much every time but making small improvements, understanding it a little bit better. We know this worked, let's try variations of that, uh, but, but stay with a winning theme. Mm -hmm. uh, that helps us, that gives us a little confidence that this is gonna land safely. And, and I'm, I'm wondering what Mars mystery or Mars fact has kind of driven you to kind of be kind of a, a champion of planetary science yeah, yeah, now, yeah, yeah. science at NASA now uh, that, uh, that you kind of latch onto when you see a, a spacecraft like Insight get ready to land. So Insight is, is really all about uh, first and foremost how terrestrial planets are structured based on their size. You know, we think that the bigger the planet, the bigger the core. Okay, but yet we have Mercury, which has a which is much smaller than Earth and even smaller than Mars, with a core about the size of the Earth. Mm -hmm. So it's caused us to think, rethink how our relationships go, how these terrestrial planets are put together. Now that's important because we're finding when we look at exoplanets, all kinds of different terrestrial type planets. There are different locations uh, from the sun. And so then are they structured on the interior differently? And where's that sweet spot that gives you the habitable zone with a planet with plate tectonics, okay? Mm -hmm. 
which we also think is important to life because that's a feature we have that seems to be unique huh. among the terrestrial planets. So it has a lot of potential um, uh, importance for more interpretation and more understanding of, of, of not only our solar system, but other solar systems. Great. And tomorrow during the landing, are you going to be kind of out here watching? No, I'm going to be in the control room. In, in the control room, yeah. So what's the, what's the mood going to be like, do you think? I mean, you've been there before for these things. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I'll be is close there a lot to, of coffee? Uh, uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, it's available if you want it. Uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, I'll already be wired with plenty of coffee prior to that, that's for sure. So, But uh, I'll be close to where the peanuts are. <laughs> well, tell me about the peanuts. There's a tradition involved There's in that here at JPL. Yeah, 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 yeah. So here's my understanding, okay, because this happened well before my, uh, my uh, 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 term as head of planetary. And that was, um, you know, JPL had the responsibility early on for planetary missions going to the moon. Mm -hmm. And so our first four planetary missions to the moon all failed. All failed, okay? Well, it's hard, right, to get to space. <laughs> well, yeah, this was in the 60s, yeah. okay, when we were just learning how to do this. So then the next lunar mission, the fifth one, I don't know who brought the peanuts into the control room, but that was successful and everybody attributed it to, to the peanuts and that's been the tradition ever since. So there's always going to be peanuts? There will always be peanuts in a landing, yes, there oh. will be. Well, <laughs> wonderful. Well, well, Actually, it's used for, all, for anything, whether it's a flyby, mm -hmm. you know, in the control room, it's, a, it's just the element of, of success. And you eat them <laughs> when you know you're successful. Oh, so you, you can't just crack them open yeah no you don't do, you know just sit there and you know eat them all over the console no <laughs> you only do that at the end of that wonderful well we hope that you'll get lots of peanuts tomorrow that's the plan uh, you know and for 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 uh you fans out there at, at uh, in space land uh you know just you know thank thank you very much uh, well, dr pleasure. green for my kind pleasure. of walking us through this mission your passion for Mars. Oh, yeah. And if, if you're looking forward to the landing tomorrow, do tune uh, in. Uh, NASA's live uh, uh, webcast does start at 2 o'clock in the afternoon on Monday. We'll be reporting live, me and Mike Wall, our senior writer here, uh, throughout the day. Actually, later today, too, because we're going to talk to some systems engineers uh, who are going to be in that room as well. So, you know, thank you very much for your time. My pleasure. Thank, thank you. Thank you for, for, for tuning in. And, uh, of course, you can follow uh, Insight at NASA Insight. Uh, NASA's webcast is at nasa.gov slash live and uh, space.com uh, just follow us here for all of the updates you know we're looking forward to it so much so I have one other thing to tell you oh sure if you want a little bit more information you can always go to my podcast called gravity assist and that's one right. of those I interviewed Bruce the PI and it's a great interview that, that's It'll right give you a little bit more background knowledge of, of what was happening how they put it together so that's gra gravity fun. assist Gravity Assist. With NASA's Jim Green. Yep. Uh, all about insight. So, so do check that out. I'm, I'm sure you can find that on Stitcher, on uh, iPad, uh, and on, at NASA, It's on right? iTunes, and, uh, and it's on uh, www.nasa.gov slash podcasts. You then can find, uh, go down the list, and Gravity Assist is there. Do, do check it out. You've got time to get all up to speed you, for tomorrow's landing. You do have landing. time. You so, do have time. So thank you. Keep looking up. Thank you, Dr. Green. All thank the best. You. Hope for peanuts. So, yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs>